Patty is an out and proud advocate of the LGBTQ community, who has also run across the Rockies and is currently the sales director of Chicago Reader. Give it up for Patty. <laughs> here in the birds, and through my parents' divorce and remarriage, I ended up in Southern California during high school. After that, I did all the things one's supposed to do, go to college, get married, have kids. And then three-ish years ago, that semi-perfect life got turned upside down. Because during that life, I was not the woman you see standing here. I grew up and lived my life in a different gender. So I'm turning 46 and I'm grappling with the biggest life change ever. I sat in my therapist's office week after week, struggling to say what I knew was in my head, what my truth was, in a safe space where someone was trained to do this, and I still couldn't say it. But let's rewind a little bit, which is what I was able to do in therapy. I was forced to put into words all the experiences that I was unable to or felt shame talking about. I was able to talk about my experiences with gender growing up. My thoughts of transformation in a rotating door, which I had seen in a movie. How other movies in which people switched bodies made me feel. About wearing my mom's clothing as a young kid. How I had these feelings, they would come on like a force of nature. And the shame I felt was so strong that I was able to bury them down real quick. And this was before the internet. I'd heard of Renee Richards, I'd heard of Christine Jorgensen. I don't know how, TV, newspaper, book. I never had the word. I didn't know there was one. I assumed I would die insane, and the voices inside my head that told me to rearrange my vessel would call me to my demise. I really had no one to look to, only the shame. In therapy, I was able to shed enough of that shame to say the words out loud. I am and always have been a woman. I moved back to Chicago after decades in Southern California to be in a place that nobody knew me, to transition and hide in anonymity. I'm doing pretty good, right? <laughs> Not supposed to do that. I'm called to be visible and give others some hope. Yes. So over the last three years of shedding that shame and identity I used as cover, I started venturing out into Chicago, making friends, telling them my story, quit my job of 25 years, a week later came out to my parents and my sister, which was a disaster. But I gained more courage, got comfortable being uncomfortable, let more people in, and then somehow ended up on the cover of Cranes. <laughs> With that visibility, now others were reaching out to me for guidance and support. And I came to the realization that visibility is a gift. A friend of mine recently said something that resonated with me. It was that her experience coming out as a lesbian at a very conservative college that I actually happened to go to, that led her to step in and be visible, and I've decided to do that also. So much of trans visibility right now is celebrity, and while they can inspire, they don't always give us that real life insight. In the past, that's all we had to look to. And now we get to see others, pilots, entrepreneurs, artists, nine to fivers, theologians, cyclists, runners. We get inspiration from them and others who have taken the idea to be visible for who they are is important. They aren't celebrity, other than to those of us who are looking for inspiration and hope. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone to do, certainly not to put yourself out there so far that you feel uncomfortable or put yourself in danger. But there are so many ways to be visible, so many ways to help others that are even just slightly behind us in our journeys. And I've made it my mission to be as visible as I can handle. And that visibility has become an armor for me. I'm taking that shame and carrying it around, that I was carrying around, and turning it around. And I'm trying to humanize people like me. So to all the allies in the room, how can you be a visible ally? What can you do to be a, a help? It's easy to be an ally when we're standing right next to you. Mm -hmm. We're a reminder of that. 
one of the biggest things you can do is stand for us when we're not there. Help us challenge the narratives that are out there. Normalize giving out your pronouns. Speak up when you can and challenge those who are out to erase or silence us. Show our humanity. And be a visible ally to others who are struggling. But also listen. Take time to hear our stories. We're human, just like everyone else, and we're not all the same. I'll leave you all with another quote I got from a guru named Muji. Step into the fire of self-discovery. This fire will not burn you. It will only burn what you are not. Mm -hmm. Woo!